This is John with the Everyday Bible Study, and we're looking at the Word of God. We're in the 22nd chapter of Matthew, and Jesus is winding down his ministry prior to his crucifixion. That listen to him, and there's many that are listening to him, and uh, we're going to take a look at seeing what the uh, Sadducees have to say to him. And uh, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, various religious leaders, are trying to trip up Jesus. And they're wanting to uh, execute him, wanting to trip him up. And uh, but um, this group of Sadducees, these are the kind of the progressives of uh, the ancient times, and uh, they're liberals, and they don't uh, have a, a full understanding of the Scripture. Uh, they don't believe in afterlife. They do not believe in angels. They do not believe in hell. And uh, that sounds like a lot of people today. Uh, but uh, here they're coming to trip up Jesus. They're going to ask him a question about the resurrection, even though they don't believe in the resurrection. But uh, we'll read here starting in the 23rd verse. It says here, The same day the Sadducees came up to him, who say that, they, uh, say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, uh, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, and his brother must marry the widow and raise up the children for his brother. And that was part of the Mosaic Law, that uh, to uh, uh, try to take care of uh, the widow, who basically in ancient times didn't have any way to take care of themselves or their children uh, once they had lost their husband, uh, that as an act of kindness, that uh, their husband was to take care of this widow and these children. And said, now they're going to set up a hypothetical situation. It says, now there were seven brothers among us, the first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother, and to the second, and the third, down to the seventh. Uh, after them all, the woman died. Now in the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife shall she be? For they all had her. And of course, this was a kind of a crazy situation that they were proposing. Probably something that would almost never occur in normal life. But they just passed this woman down. Uh, among all the brothers, and they all just kept dying, okay? Because, of course, this was nonsensical, but they were trying to set Jesus up uh, to come up with something that he would say that would be blasphemous or uh, they, could, they would not agree with, that they could uh, charge against him. But Jesus said to him, uh, You are wrong, because you know neither the Scriptures or the power of God. Whoa, that's an interesting way to start off the answering the question. Uh, For the resurrection... They neither marry nor are given in marriage. They're like angels in heaven. So he's telling us a real important secret here that they didn't know, and many people didn't know, people now oftentimes don't know, is that uh, in heaven there is no marriage. And what's the use of marriage? Uh, marriage is, uh, of course, a very pleasurable thing, and uh, sex is a very pleasurable thing, but it is uh, its ultimate intention is to raise families, to bring up families. And the family was established uh, before most of most uh, any of the ordinances of the church. Um, very ancient times, if you look in the book of Genesis, marriage was established. And uh, this was done by God. And uh, so that uh, society would have order. And Jesus talked about uh, marriage needing to be uh, one man and one woman. So when we deviate from that, we're not doing it right. And uh, we're doing it oftentimes in a way that's sinful. Uh, to pursue our various lusts, but um, at least they understood that marriage needed, between a, needed to be between a man and a woman. And uh, so uh, he's telling them that in heaven that there will be no marriage because we'll have eternal bodies in heaven and uh, we won't have the need to raise families in heaven because uh, everybody's going to live forever that makes it there anyway. And uh, as for the resurrection of the dead, you have not read what was said to you by God. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Uh, he is not of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd overheard this, uh, they were astonished by his teaching. So um, here they were trying to trip Jesus up and Jesus instead schooled them and uh, told them that uh, uh, this you know, crazy hypothetical situation uh, just really didn't apply to any real world situations uh, because um, uh, there was not going to be any marriage in heaven. Of course, they didn't believe in heaven anyway, uh, but they were just trying to trip Jesus up. 
Now, we're going to see here in chapter 34, he's going to tell them the great commandment. But uh, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. They said, ooh, we got our opportunity now. Um, they're going to try to trip him up. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, said, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, uh, this is very important, said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend the law of the prophets. I need to pause this for just a second. Okay, we're back. Okay, so he said that uh, what we need to do is to, uh, to keep the Ten Commandments, which was the law of God. We need to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength. And that right there covers the first four commandments of the Old Testament. And uh, he said, this is the first, uh, this is the great and first commandment. And that's, that means that is more important than anything else, is that you're to love God. And you think about yourself. Uh, do you love God? And have you done things uh, to show your love for God in your actions, in your deeds, in the things that you do? Or, or do most days you even think about God? Most of us think about ourselves a lot. Or we think about the things of this world a lot, but we oftentimes neglect God and we don't put God first. And uh, we're not really loving Him with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind. And in the book of Mark, it also says all of our strength. And uh, the second is like uh, it. it said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, or the two commandments depend on the law of the prophets. So, um, if you're doing those things, uh, first you're loving God with all your heart and your soul and your strength, uh, all your or excuse me, all your soul, your strength, um, soul and uh, with your mind and uh, with your heart, then um, you know he's he's the focus of your attention, and uh, he's also the um, uh, focus of your emotions, and um, he's the focus of your eternity. And he's the focus of what's in your head. He's what you're thinking about. Uh, if you love God in all those different ways, and you do this on a frequent basis, uh, then you're keeping that commandment. And the, the second verse uh, said, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, you're to put your neighbor, or the people that are in your life, above you, and to try to lift them up, and to think of them more than you do yourself. Um, and Jesus told his disciples repeatedly that they need to be a servant to each other and servant to mankind. And uh, to not uh, always be thinking about oneself because uh, the kingdom of heaven, uh, the last will be first and the first will be last. And uh, Jesus is showing us a proper way to live. Now we're going to look here a little bit at verse 41. It says, Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, uh, saying, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, How is then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And then David calls him Lord. How is he, the, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Uh, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. So he was confounding uh, the way that they were thinking. And of course his ways were much uh, uh, greater than, than ours. God's is. He was God 100%. Also 100% man. And uh, it, there, this was a mystery that uh, they could not understand. Uh, that the Son of God could be from the lineage of David. And... Uh, that he would still be uh, eternal. And uh, their understanding was very limited. But uh, if you remember, Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he didn't have a natural uh, father. He had a supernatural father, and that was God the Father. And um, he was also conceived by the Holy Spirit. So he was of God. And he came in an earthly body. and But he did have a, have a physical mother, uh, and that was Mary. And she was a very special person that God set aside uh, to uh, bear 
his son into this world. And he came into this world and became one of us, came down from the majesties of heaven in order to provide us salvation. And the Pharisees, uh, they just really couldn't understand that. And of course, uh, Jesus is also hinting to them uh, something that he had said before. Uh, he's, uh, in a roundabout way, trying to let them know that he is the Messiah, that he is the Christ. And uh, uh, some of them uh, were starting to accept this. Some of them did not. And some of them were highly offended that he would let them know this information because uh, they couldn't accept that uh, this person who was in an earthly body could be the Messiah, the one that was promised throughout the ages, uh, be their Savior. But he was their Savior, and he was getting ready to prove that uh, because he was going to die for their sins, and then he was going to resurrect from the dead uh, and conquer over sin and death and become the Savior of the world to all that would believe in him. And this is the question today. Do you believe in him? Do you believe that God sent him down from heaven in a supernatural way to save us from our sins? And the biblical evidence for this is outstanding. Uh, there are so many prophecies that are throughout the Old Testament that were fulfilled only in Jesus. No one else could fulfill them. And if you looked at the statistical information, how likely uh, it would be for somebody to be fulfilling those uh, commandments and those uh, prophecies that are in the Bible, um, you just couldn't count the number. The number would be uh, too, too big to be believed. There's a couple of interesting books that you could read about that. Uh, there's a book called, uh, by Josh McDowell called Evidence Demands a Verdict. And there's another uh, book called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And uh, if you want to pick up those books and read them, uh, it can show you how um, Jesus was set aside from the beginning to be sent by God uh, to uh, be uh, the one that was provided salvation. And the Bible's real simple says that whoever believes on Christ uh, shall be saved. And if you believe that God did this for you and you're willing to turn away from your sin or you repent of your sin and you make a decision to live for God, live for Christ, uh, then you can be born again. You can be changed from the inside out and God can provide you salvation. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and thank you for this message here today. And uh, we love this beautiful day that you provided with us out here in the nature. And uh, God, uh, you've done so much for us that we do not deserve. But the one thing that you did for us uh, that we most richly do not deserve is the fact that you sent your only son to die for us, to take the sins of the world upon him and to have those sins destroyed upon the cross through his death and that uh, his, your wrath was poured out on him so that it had not have to be poured out upon us, that he could intercede for us, that he could be the Savior for our sins, and that uh, He could impart His righteousness to us, and that we could be brought into Your family, and that we could be Your sons and daughters. And Lord, we need a Savior because sins will utterly destroy us and lead us to hell, uh, lead us to destruction for eternity. But uh, we're so glad that You love us enough that You want to redeem your sins, and You want to forgive us of our sin, and provide us eternal life. So we pray that many people will believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord and will confess that with their lips and let other people know that they believe and that they will turn away from sin, repent of their sin, and turn toward righteous living, turn toward you to help them uh, to live a, a life of holiness. And uh, Lord, we know that you can provide this for us, that you can clean us up from the inside out and make us new creations in Christ. So Heavenly Father, we just pray that many people will have faith and they'll exercise that faith and that you gave them and that they will believe on Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for the Everyday Bible Study today. And uh, we're going to get into a big passage of Scripture here uh, in the next lesson. So uh, keep watching these lessons. If you want to watch the previous lesson, uh, they'll pop up on the screen. Or if you see a picture of me playing the guitar, uh, that way you can subscribe to our channel and uh, you can get notifications whenever we produce new videos. We try to produce new videos three or four times a week at least and uh, continue to study the Bible with us in the Everyday Bible Study. So we're praying that God blesses you and you have a great day. Thanks.